we know now, this is the big subject, it's, it's affecting not only the muscular system, but really the fascia system. So uh, I want to give you an opportunity to maybe talk a little bit more about, you know, how you kind of got started with the fascial system and how the Viper Pro and, and what we're doing with movement patterns. How is that all starting to kind of come together? Because I've seen it over the last couple of years, but I wanted to hear it from you. Obviously, it's going to sound way better coming from you. Um, yeah, I wouldn't put that much pressure on me. <laughs> I may not be that good. <laughs> now, um, in 20, 2004, uh, and in full credit goes to Tom Myers, right? So, you know, in his book, Anatomy Trains, it was a way to look at uh, chains of muscles, longitudinal maps of anatomy, right? From the feet all the way to the head. Uh, but implicit within the chains of muscle are the connective elements to it. Uh, and so one of the connecting elements is uh, fascia, which is described as connective tissue. But if you look at the definition of connective tissue, it has two roles. The definition of connective tissue is that it's designed to connect and also to disconnect which is never really seen, like fascia is designed to disconnect? Absolutely, because fascial bundles, when you dissect and look at you know, uh, the body for yourself, if we had nothing but connections, there would not be a, uh, you know, a let's say a semi-tendinosis hamstring independent from the adductor magnus, it would all be connected. And we know that in therapeutic realms or in injury realms, if you've got an adhesion, that is connective tissue becoming too connected. Right. So the idea of sliding and gliding and, you know, approximating and moving our bodies is the fascia doing two things really well, connecting strongly and disconnecting strongly. <laughs> right. And so by virtue of movement, right, uh, and organizing movement, what we are doing is reinforcing the, the, the cables, right, the three dimensional fibrous connective tissue that is fascia fibrous connective tissue. So, you know, can we make those struts and cables strong? Uh, but can we also give a variety of different movement tasks such that we can reinforce the disconnection of structure so they can move independently of one another? And so it reinforces those particular patterns to be sure. So back in, you know, 04, learning that perspective and at the same time crashing into this constraint that Simon and I had relative to these farm kids being stronger than the city kids and trying to be well, what, why, I mean, what are they doing? And then looking at it and going, well, they're not really dealing with sub or uh, maximal loads. They're not really dealing with maximal loads much of the day. And yet they're stronger, but how are they stronger? Because if you put a, a farm kid in the gym under linear maximal, you know, uh, plates on a bar, probably advantage gym kid. So it's not that one is always better than the other. It's that, okay, you know what? Like to your point, there are different inputs. And so can we start to take advantage of those different inputs and what is going on? Because the gym kid is typically bigger, more muscular than their farm counterpart, but that the farm counterpart in odd positions had huge advantage because they were sinewy, they were stable. They were just, you know, otherwise you couldn't move them around. Even their handshake, you shook their hand and they were strong from their fingertips all the way through their body. And they weren't as muscularly developed as the bodybuilder or the strength athlete in the gym in the city. So when you looked at that, what they said, well, what, what tissue are they taking advantage of? And by for sure, my muscle, uh, muscular tissue to be sure. And there's, there's no doubt that the nervous system plays a role in it as well. Uh, but then this omnidirectional load has a huge capacity to be able to remodel in a way that provides shape stability. And it is this shape stability that is your authentic biological, you know, wetsuit or weightlifting suit, right? Which is skin all and then down. Uh, and if we can reinforce the robustness of that, automatically force potential or the generation of force, that potential goes up. Because, you know, um, to grab a, a quote from Paul Check, like you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. So you can only produce as much force as you can stabilize. And if you're you know, skin and, and your fascial net is, is supportive and it's structurally stable. Uh, and it's, it's packed with collagen that are long and strong and glued down with all the soluble carbohydrate polymers that are in the interstitia and fascia. That recipe is awesome for shape stability body wide. And it's not a muscular conversation alone. In fact, that conversation is not about muscle at all. And the advantage there is that stability doesn't require any metabolic cost, right? And so we conserve metabolic energy. 
And that is a great deal for any athlete that has to, you know, do something for more than a minute. Uh, and if they have to do something repeated for more than a minute in bouts of work to rest, right? And that's most of sport, uh, then huge advantage to them because it, it decreases the risk of injury. It increases the economy of energy utilization, uh, and it otherwise bulletproofs the chassis and the horsepower of their car. And so it's not all we do, but I think, see what you said is the recognition of particularly young athletes. Like if you said, Hey, young athlete, let's forget about your horsepower. You're going to get to that. You know, when you get 14, 15, 16, right now, let's get a strong chassis on your car. Now that doesn't sound too sexy, right? A, a, a big horsepower. That sounds pretty you know, appealing, but what is truly appealing and should be and ought to be appealing for these young athletes is the more effective and strong the chassis of their, the, their car, this, this engine that, or this body that they have, uh, the, the less risk of injury and the more horsepower you can put in that car eventually. Because when you rev it, it ain't gonna break. Mm -hmm. And that's the advantage that the farm kids had. They were building a just a really ridiculously strong chassis. And everybody on Instagram, everybody in name and lights, you're right. It's about the number. It's about the time. It's about, and that's revving the horsepower. And what we're trying to do is while that's awesome and it's needed, uh, it's there as a function predicated on having a strong chassis of the car. 